is it possible for us to you know just take a particular patient take the full history of a particular patient and then have all of these rules written in natural language the increasing rise of the large language models uh, especially transformer based ones like chat gpt is making a lot of people question do we really need to capture structured data at all do we really need to worry about standards and uh, code systems and all of these uh, legacy things when in the future we can just run queries over unstructured data so i just want to tackle that topic and break this down so that we can look at each of this as a separate problem and then see with the current state of large language models if any of these things will change so if you are a developer or if you are working in health it and technology this might be relevant to you because this will change a lot of things we do right so the first uh, problem is structured data capture uh, so a lot of people today capture data in a structured way at the point of data entry so whether that be a nurse or a doctor they are expected to capture or uh, specific codes and specific fields and they are asked to spend some extensive amount of time documenting uh, these things now i think this specific thing can be done very well by large language models as they stand today right except for really long forms uh, they are able to do it relatively well with some amount of fine tuning uh, you can just input Uh, unstructured text or you could just talk to a transcription agent and you could just uh, have that transcribed as text uh, and in the future we may even have uh, multimodal agents looking at handwriting and you know just looking at documents and converting that uh, but the whole unstructured data to structured data problem uh, is pretty you know the large language models today are pretty impressive at how accurate they are when it comes to this so i think in the future large language models will be able to replace a lot of what we are doing today with uh, structured data capture directly from the user so whether it be it a doctor directly entering it or a nurse or a you know an assistant listening to a doctor and then entering this data i think most of that work can be done by large language models uh, fairly accurately now that comes to the second point which is uh if you want to make decisions on this data you want to hold somebody accountable for creating that data point right so even if a large language model were to automatically take a transcript and then transcribe that to some specific output you still want somebody to um check that output and then verify and sign off on that saying that yes i have seen the output of the model and this data is accurate right so when you need a uh, actionable data and when you are going to uh, do something on this data so let's say you are going to uh, inject a patient with a specific drug you want that data to be signed off or you want that data to uh, have somebody associated with it who can take responsibility for it so there i'm it's a mix of both so large language models might be able to transcribe and you know convert this data into the structured format so a lot of the effort so i would say 80% of the effort in uh, actually writing this and actually uh, capturing this data would be taken off of the user but the end user still needs to look at the final output of the model and then approve and say that yes this is what i mean this is okay right so because there are even uh, there are some uh, drugs that sound really similar there are some diagnoses that sound really similar and even to a well trained professional transcript uh, agent they may find it difficult to transcribe certain things right like for example you can have fundus that means the fundus of the eye it could be the fundus of the stomach i think there are another three four funduses just in the human body so a lot of this has to do with context and what the doctor or the the practitioner really means so i would say before we can take action on data somebody needs to check off on it and verify that yes this is what i really mean so i still think that uh 
structured data capture as a mechanism will still stay but most of the burden of converting the unstructured data to structured data will not be manual but it will instead be an automatic process but it still has to be checked off by the practitioner and that brings us to the next uh, point which is what if we want to do some sort of an action on this data right like so can models can large language models automatically do most of these actions so today we do it in a mostly rule based manner so for example if a patient uh, has been prescribed a certain drug and they fail to follow up after a certain uh, a few days please check on them right so can we write this in natural language is it possible for us to you know just take a particular patient take the full history of a particular patient and then have all of these rules written in natural language uh, instead of writing all of these understanding these rule based engines and we have uh, you know uh, fire cql we have open air gdl and uh, dl and all of these coming up but is it possible for large language models to just completely leapfrog over all of these approaches and have policies written on a particular patient in natural language uh, so to answer this question we have to think about what a large language model needs in order to really work with such data right so firstly the model will need to definitely call external apis in order to get the relevant context for a particular patient so let's take an example of um, warn me if a patient is hypertensive and is not on any medication right so we have two checks here like check if the patient is hypertensive uh check if the patient is not on any drugs associated with hypertension so you may want to prompt the uh, practitioner to prescribe something for their hypertension if you know that so a rule based engine would simply just check for example the diagnosis uh, field the diagnosis archetype or the uh, the condition fire resource and check do they have hypertension and checking if they have hypertension is also not a very trivial task you need to uh, go through all the codes that can possibly code hypertension right so it's all the snomit ct codes possibly icd codes and possibly some other codes as well and check if the value that was present in the data point is a subset of these codes that's just checking if they are hypertensive so okay let's just take make it simpler let's just check if the patient is hypertensive so how would a large language model do this now training and retraining the model on a specific patient on a specific patient's data is not very feasible at the moment i mean there are a few approaches like q lora that are coming up which can you know you can just plug and play modules but i think it's unlikely that um, people will start retraining these specific models on the data of a very specific patient instead it would probably be function calling right so you have your main llm or your main large language model and then you tell this model to call out other functions uh, and then you get and compile all the relevant data and then the model can then make a decision right so in this case uh, we again have two options we can do so if you're going with fully um, you like purely unstructured data you are going to go with uh, vector engines like vector search engines so for example something like diagnosis of hypertension would be a purely vector based search operation that you do with this particular prompt which is check if uh, the patient has a diagnosis of hypertension right but i actually think that's a little unsafe because the unstructured data might not have uh, you know the level of confidence and the level of uh, you know responsibility that the same structured data point will have right so uh, you could for example encode this as just a free text field and then use a vector search engine to just find everything that relates to diagnosis but again it's not a very straightforward vector search either here you're not searching for similarity in this case so let's say you have a you have a sentence that states check if the patient is hypertensive right what you 
want to retrieve from the vector search engine is all the diagnosis and you know all the diagnosis that this patient has and you also want to kind of restrict it to hypertension so <clears throat> it's not a similarity search so that's what most vector engines do which which is a similarity search with the input prompt sentence but this is not a similarity search and in fact i do not think a similarity based approach would work well here maybe some sort of an embedding space uh, you know some engineering there might work but still i think it's a much more uh, it's, a, it's a much better option to store all of this in a structured database and then have the large language model you know construct queries that can then retrieve this data from that structured database so for example an, an example would be to use fire search query parameters and just retrieve all the conditions and then use a snowmet ct based expression constraint language for all the subsets of diabetes and then uh, compare this and then you know it's basically essentially what the uh, rule based engine would do but we are trying to make the large language model then call these apis i think this is a much more safe method of doing this because you also can explain to the end user why you came to this conclusion right you can say okay i did this step i did that step and then this is why i'm finally reporting to you that this patient is hypertensive uh, where opposed to if you just were to search on structured uh, unstructured data um the vector search may or may not be accurate and on top of that the model is just making you know you are basically injecting the result of the vector search into the prompt and yeah and again like you also have this issue of uh, hitting the context window so if a lot of these results you have a lot of diagnosis for a patient you hit the context window of a particular prompt and it may not produce accurate results um so i think structured apis and structured function calling is still very important even for large language models so even if we are to use these for clinical decision support we still need a proper api layer and a proper function calling layer uh, for this to benefit uh, from and we are not going to just do vector search on uh, maybe if vector search gets like really like incredibly more accurate than it is right now and there are ways to vector search some specific concept rather than just doing a similarity search but as it stands today i don't see vector search being able to do this so directly running analytics or i mean directly running clinical decision support on um on any of these unstructured data points they don't make sense to me right now but we'll see how things are uh two to three years from now and maybe someone comes up with something crazy in the uh you know the vector space and maybe who knows uh but as it stands today nope i would not recommend running you know clinical decision support on a vector database and uh using llms so this brings us to the third uh problem which is population analytics and high level you know just running analytical queries on top of all your data right so you have questions like how many patients came to me with fever how many patients uh, are yet to pay for their surgery so these kind of questions so this is where unstructured data starts breaking down uh, quite a bit and i think unless we see extremely good progression of of the context window size of these large language models we are definitely going to hit a limit in what we can do with these kind of uh, questions and large language models so let's take for example uh, how many patients came to me with uh, fever right just to answer this you need to go if you are just using unstructured data you need to look at all of your unstructured data and then you need to uh, get all data points that have some similarity with fever and you could do that it's possible but then finally what you are doing is essentially a count operation on on all of these and llms are pretty bad at these mathematical operations in fact they usually delegate it to another function calling they use something like python or they you know they call another api like wolfram alpha for example in order to do all of these operations so just 
th- this amount of scale and just thinking about the context window of these models today i don't see analytics happening purely on unstructured data vector engine plus large language models and just the context window alone you know just rules this out and the inability of these models to make sense out of the context window is another problem you also have this lost in the middle problem where uh, most of the llms today just look at the starting and the ending of a prompt they just don't look at the middle part of the prompt so it's, it's true you can try it out on chat gpt 4 even you provide it with a very long prompt and you have some important information in the middle like towards the lower end of the middle i would say i can even show you an example uh, but if you give it some information in the middle it will completely skip over it and it will not you know it will not take it into consideration in the end result so we have that problem today people might solve that but again i don't see the context window increasing infinitely uh, and even if it did like the efficiency of these models they are not really meant for these kind of analytical operations anyway so a much better approach would again be storing your data in a structured format and then having these models learn how to query them right like you can store them like they're pretty good at doing sql nowadays but you can have aql or you can have cql and you can have all of these different standard apis uh, and then you can train the large language model to learn these apis through fushart or uh, through qlora or some of these techniques and then you can use the model to generate what they would call out right and then that gets executed in the structured database and that returns your result i think that's a much much better way and again you get uh, you get accurate results you get responsibility for who has what data and in general unstructured data although lang- large language models can work on this it's not a great way for humans to collaborate right so if you have two human beings just you know working with uh, unstructured data you may have a data analyst doing the same query and a large language model assisted data analyst doing a similar query uh, just the fact that you have these domain specific languages and you can validate and verify the output of these llms they make a huge difference and just going with vector search plus unstructured data plus llms it's like a black box right you don't know really what's going in what's coming out you kind of have an idea but you don't know how many hits it really missed you don't know how many data points there are still in your unstructured data that the vector search didn't gather right and uh, this also like makes me think about okay maybe even in the future if we completely get rid of vector search and we are able to fine tune very specific parts of the llm to understand the current patient data right even then uh, these models are not good at certain operations yet like counting and um, doing certain mathematical operations on the data it already knows about right so it's again just a maybe it's an emergent property maybe with <laughs> increasing model uh, parameters we may get these uh, the more of these arithmetic capabilities as well but as it stands today um it seems to be unlikely and it seems to be a much more efficient uh, method to just use a structured database structure your data uh, fire open air storm at city use all of these and then have llms call these apis which then have a specific uh, structured api and then get your results so that seems to be a much better option Uh, for at least clinical decision support as well as analytical queries uh, for the first option which is just unstructured to structured data i think at the point of care um practitioners and nurses need not directly enter data themselves uh, they could be heavily assisted by these llms but they still need to verify and check off on this data so that there is a user a real physical user who is held accountable for the data they enter and it can't just be a model that has entered some spurious data right so that's uh, those are my thoughts and i still think structured data and all of these apis are even more relevant now than they were before because now you have this ability to uh, just convert massive amounts of data into the structured data uh, using llms so i think most of these applications will need some sort of a structured data store and structured apis so those are my thoughts 
Uh, I'll see you in the next one.